hi and welcome to part two of the terrain painting tutorial so far we have created a terrain which will automatically be um, painted with the different textures that we've got set for the terrain so here's our terrain and here's the different textures we've got five of them here um, and they're in order of the lowest to the highest in altitude that they're being used for. Now, when we have a look at our terrain from the side, you can see that each of these layers is perfectly clipped off. And as I discussed in the last tutorial, if we get in close to the edge here, um, there's actually a very small overlap in the textures here, like a, probably about you know one um, polygon in the um, actual terrain mesh which gives it a slight fuzziness in here but as we all know real terrain doesn't look like this so the aim of this tutorial is to make these lines here uh, a little bit more random um, jagged and overlapping of the textures all right so i'm just going to get back into 3d mode for this scene and just move it around so we can examine it a bit closer as we modify the code. So the first thing we're going to do in our paint terrain is actually declare a new variable inside our little splat heights class, which will determine the overlap that these textures can have. So I'm gonna put in a public int and I'll call it overlap. And this be the distance uh, that our textures are allowed to overlap. So if I just save that and switch back into Unity, select the terrain and have a look down at uh, the settings for that script, we now have an overlap that we can put in here. Um, so let's say that the sand overlaps by 10 um, and the next one overlaps by 10, the grass overlaps by 15, the rock overlaps by 5 and the snow overlaps by... Uh, 15 something like that all right and then back in the code we're actually going to use those values all right so through the magic of video editing I've already fixed up the code and this is what you'll need to add in to use that new overlap so um, first of all what I'm doing uh, that you can see um, this is inside of this uh, for loop that loops through all the splat heights um, first of all, I'm creating two variables, this height start and next height start. So this is the height start for the actual texture we're working with. And this is the starting position of the next texture. And I'm putting them into separate variables rather than putting them inside those if statements down here, because they're going to get a little bit longer as we go along. Okay. Um, now because I'm a bit OCD about code, I have to get rid of this space. Okay, um, now this height start is going to equal splat height starting height that we had before that we were using to test minus the overlay. So it's actually going to come down a little bit on the map. And then I'm creating this next height start value, setting it to zero. Now we only need a next height start if there's another texture. So if we're working with textures below the topmost texture, then we bother with this calculating this height start. Otherwise, we're going to get an error when we try and access the um, texture or the splat map for the texture that is above when it doesn't exist. And in this case, we're going to add the overlap so that we get this um, band of overlap below the height and above the height that we've set before. Now, um, this height start gets put down into the if this if statement down here instead of uh, what we had before, with which was all of that. And then the next statement, which tests if you're between two heights for the texture, it's going to be between this height start and next height start. Okay, great. So um, save that and go back to Unity and run it. And I already am, so you'll see, bang, what's happened. <laughs> um, we've got this really amazing stripy pattern and you can see where all these overlaps are going on. So um, down the bottom here, just zoom out, here's our sand. Here's the overlap of the sand onto the dirt. And then there's the dirt and the overlay of the dirt and the grass. Then there's the grass, 
then these the overlay of the grass and the rock um and then there's just rock and dirty looking snow at the top <laughs> now you might be thinking wow that looks really bright and the reason is because in our splat map we're setting all of those alpha values to one so everything is turned on full bore um, which makes it really really bright so the process we have to do now is to actually normalize that vector that we've created that has for each single point on this map it has the amount of each texture that should be at that single point and rather than having like one zero one one zero zero uh, in that particular array we want to set it so that the total of that array adds up to one and that's what you call normalizing a vector so in order to normalize a vector you actually add up the values in the vector and then divide each value by the total and that will normalize it okay so I'll stop running we'll go back to our code and we'll write a little function that will normalize it so just above this start function is where I'm going to put my normalize function which I've already written I'm just going to paste it in here for you so the normalize function does what I just explained. What goes through the entire array that you send it and adds it all up. And then it goes through the array again and divides each value by that total. And that will give you a normalized vector. So um, once you've typed that in, you can now use the normalize function down the bottom of our code before we put that splat array into the um, splat map data for the train so it's normalize and um, splat which is our array okay save that switch back to unity and run and bang now you can see it's normalized and therefore everything's not turned up extremely bright as it was before and you can see the subtle overlap of these um, textures and where it's happening so you can see um, the changes in those layers and the snow doesn't look as bad as it did before either all right so that is overlapping now we still have this problem if we zoom out and have a look at our train like this we've got these bands of color and in nature you, you don't see bands of color like that or very rarely do you what we want to see if we come down and look at where this dirt is we want to see nice flowy patterns you know like this so to get nice flowing patterns or what we call smooth randomness we're going to use pearl and noise if you've watched my other procedural uh, terrain generation tutorials then I've explained pearl and noise in a lot of detail but basically it is um, it's smooth randomness okay it looks random but it's actually not it's um, a mixture of sine and cosines that give you uh, a nice sort of terrainy looking random sequence of numbers that don't just go like up and down and change rapidly in between the values but they sort of go you know up and then come down and then go up and down and um, by putting those into this terrain and using that value for um, around you know these areas where all of these terrains are um, joining each other I shouldn't say terrains I should say textures shouldn't I where the textures are joining each other we want to have this sort of um, smooth random feeling going on right so uh, let's do that back in here we can use the noise function and what the noise function does is it generates a very little tiny value between 0 and 1 so to use this on our height we can actually multiply it on our values um, that we're setting for their height so we do it like this multiply and it's math f dot perlin noise and we give it our x and y value that is being generated for the map up here now perlin noise 
requires inputs of small values and x and y aren't small they start at zero and go up to like 512 or whatever the size of the terrain is but we want them to be little tiny values um, to input into there so I'm going to multiply them by 0 0.05 and multiply this one by 0 0.05 and that will make them small and give us um, a nice range of pearl and noise values so I can grab that and I'm going to multiply the overlap by that as well. And I'm also going to multiply the next starting height and its overlap by the pearl and noise. Okay, so you can see them there. So each value in these equations have been multiplied with our pearl and noise, our random smooth value. And just before we save that, we're going to put Fs on the end of all of these. Otherwise, Unity will complain about them being double values. Okay, and now I will save it. Switch back to Unity and press play. And bang, you can see that noise coming into its own. And isn't it beautiful? Um, so let's go over into some light. You can see how that noise has really stirred up the snow um, and because it's multiplying your height value between something between 0 and 1 and ac actually reduce the value of the snow right down to being at 0 level and actually see a tiny bit of snow just down here um, so it, it looks pretty spectacular but we need to now limit how far down we're going to let the noise value affect it so we could actually just run a clamp over the noise and set it back so it doesn't come down so far. So again, let's go back into our code and just add that. Okay, so it's going to be added to this value here. So I'm going to, with um, this height start, create a float, uh, this noise, and set that to math f.clamp. And we're going to clamp our random value, which is that, in between some value and 1. Um, so if we set it, say, between 0 0.5 and 1, so it's not going to go all the way down to 0. And then this noise can be used back into this function. All right, then in here, we need to do the same thing. Float next noise. Actually, I could use the same one, can't I? Let me take that out, don't worry about it. We'll just use this noise. Because it's being calculated on the same x, y values. Uh, ideally, you probably should put plus one on the X and the Y in this case um, to make it consistent, but it's not doesn't really seem to make a lot of difference. Okay, so we're clamping it between 0 0.5 and 1, and then we're adding those um, noise in here in that place. Let's save it, go back and run, and that should um, lift up. Oh, hold on, what have I done wrong? Oh, once again, I've forgotten the F in here. Damn doubles and floats always trip me up. Okay, run. Right, there we go. Now you can see I got rid of all that lower level snow. Um, but if we just zoom in here, you can see that um, we now have this nice sort of random flowing thing going on with our snow. Now because of that that desperate sort of 0 0.5 clamping cutoff that we've got here. You can see how it's affected at that particular level. So um, rather than having that drastic cutoff in the clamping of those um, pearl and noise values, I'm going to map them um, into a different space so that um, instead of a value between 0 and 1, it's going to remap it into a value between say 0 0.5 and 1 so it sort of squishes the values up it doesn't actually cut them off like we had before so um, in order to do that you need a map function because unity doesn't come one uh, come with one but uh, a lot of other 
systems do. So I've just written this little map function here for you and you can put that above the start. So it takes a value, it then wants to know that original values range between its minimum and its maximum value. And then you give it the new range that you want it to go through. Okay, so that's these two values. Now, what I've done down here is to modify my this noise to use the map function. And I give it the value generated by the Perlin noise, which is between zero and one. And I'm going to remap it between 0.5 and one. Okay, so if I go back to Unity where I've already run this, you can see the effect. So the snow here, you're not getting any sharp cutoffs on any of the terrain. It still flows around nicely. Now you've got these patches um, of overlapping that you can still see here. And you can just control those with the variables with the amount of overlap if you don't like how much overlap is going on. Um, if you think it's too jagged, um, like around here on the snow, if you think this just looks too jagged and unrealistic, you can modify the Perl and noise value. Um, so going down into here, into the code, Perl and noise, uh, the smaller you make this multiplier, the smoother you will get in your randomness. So if I actually made this 0.01, not two, one, and 0 0.01 as your multiplier and save that and go back to Unity and let's just run it. See how this became extremely smooth? So at it, smaller values it becomes uh, like this. Now this is just too smooth. Um, we don't really want that almost back at where we were before even though we are getting like dips and rises in the randomness but it's, it's probably just too much. So if we go back to the code, and what was it before, 0.5, um, let's say if we make it three, save it, and then run it. Yeah, okay, so you can see this isn't as jagged as it was before, and you imagine if you make that um, Perl and Noise multiplier, larger than that still you'll get a lot more jaggedness in there okay so that's the end of this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it it was nice and short for a change um, i might make a part three in a little bit and actually use pearl and noise to generate the terrain that is on this um, terrain object in unity uh, rather than using the meshes that were used in previous um, tutorials. Uh, and that, that will then allow us to auto paint it as well without too much difficulty because of Unity already having those um, splat maps in place for us to manipulate. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed this again. I enjoyed it because I love procedural generated stuff and um, I will talk to you next time.